I'm super jealous that you guys got a shout out from Kevin from the office. You didn't know it was going to be me, did you? You think us accountants just stay in the background, but nope, I'm out here. Robert Martin reached out and, uh, and you know, I've been looking through the books, all right, because I, I manage your band's accounts. You're, I'm, it's called an accountant. I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, and I realized, yep, you've done it. You have hit 75 shows. James Barker, that is huge. That's what she said. I, I don't know how you managed to do that. I, re I, I saw the first show and I was like, oh, uh oh, I won't have to work very hard. But it turns out I was wrong. Congratulations. Um, and you know, since you're, since you're actually booking shows, if you ever need a drummer, just, just give me a call. All right. Cause I'm free literally forever. Are you guys using Cameo for that or what is that? Yeah, we're just legit going on Cameo. It's like the best thing that was ever invented. You guys need to get on. Are you guys on Cameo so we can get a shout out from you? No, we actually are. We should do that. I mean, because we just do that for free. People share it on like Instagram. We're like, oh, we'll just give them to whoever. But you're, you're probably right. We probably should just get on there. Well, I learned that from watching The Dark Knight when the Joker said, if you're good at something, never do it for free. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, well, there you, there you go. Should take advice from the Joker. My, o my only life advice ever comes from watching television and movies. What does that say about me? I'm basically yeah, well, Ahmed I mean, from Community. It's, it's totally real. So. <laughs> um, what, what would have been better is if Kevin had a pot of chili. If he spilled a pot of chili in your video, I would have just died. I wonder how much you would have to pay him to do that. Because <laughs> I bet you he gets that request so often. <laughs> um, why did you guys decide to end the live streams? It just became one of those things where you could, you could tell we were getting, like, you know, kind of varying viewers you know, on different nights. And I was like, you know what? The summer weather's here and if people want to be outside. They they want to kind of go and do their own thing. They don't want to have to be stuck inside. And so we thought, you know, let's, let's kind of call it here. We've had an amazing run and that's not to say that we can't do, you know, do them every couple of weeks or something, but the consecutive thing, I feel like it was just good to, to call it. And plus it was like a, a big commitment every day. Yeah. You guys run like at least an hour every day, right? Yeah, it was a, it was an hour every day, and I think I ended up doing like four hundred and twenty something songs. That's in. Did you ever repeat a song or never? A, a couple of times where I repeated them because people would like really request them, especially like our tunes, um, which is good. But <laughs> for the most part, was was learning like yeah, yeah, exactly. But but for the most part, just uh, learning like would we'll spend the hour before cramming trying to learn new songs. Was there any? Was there any you did and you're like, this is actually kind of cool. I'd like to bring this into the live show when we get to do that again. Yeah, there was a few of those. I mean, because I, I started doing a thing on Sundays where I did all songs from the 70s, so like Psychedelic Sunday. And uh, I did, we did Come Together by the Beatles, and it was so cool, like broken down. I was like, that would be such a cool song to add to the show. So, that would be unreal. So when we see you in Calgary next, we're, we'll, we'll be expecting the Beatles come together? Yeah, I would, I would highly, highly expect that. If it's not that, it'll be Britney Spears' Toxic, and I'm good with both. And the... And, and you know what? That might be better anyway. Bobby <laughs> didn't show off his dance moves. <laughs> hey, speaking of Bobby, I was going to ask what you've been busy doing during quarantine besides these live shows because all he's been doing is working out and getting shredded, and it terrifies me. Yeah, it is terrifying. Well, I, I mean, I was trying to do the home workout thing too, and then Bobby clearly has, A, been working out like crazy, and B, not been eating a carb. <laughs> and so uh, I... I don't, I don't know what he's, what he's doing, but uh, he definitely beat the rest of us on the athletic front. Does this mean when you guys get back out on the road, he doesn't have to wear a shirt on stage? That's like a requirement now that he's just shirtless all the time? Oh, man. Don't even tell him that because <laughs> that, that'll be the first thing he like. He'll be like all over that if you say that. So <laughs> I think what we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to force feed him like 100 feet beers in the first two weeks so he, like, he gets back to our – our body state. You need to get him on everybody else's level. Get that beer gut back just a little bit so the rest of you don't feel so much shame. What what have you been? What has been sort of your quarantine kick? What, obviously, you tried the workout. It wasn't really for you. Did you turn to baking? Did you turn to reading? What what was your thing that got, kind of got you through it besides the live shows? I mean, it, it's been weird because it's been so long. Now, at first, we really got into, like, my wife and I were baking bread and, and doing that whole thing. And, uh, Still doing the fitness, actually trying to work in and go for a run every day just to keep some sort of mobility. Um, but it's, it's actually been really good, I feel like, f for myself and most musicians. You just get so much time to practice and, and write and do all that stuff at home. So it's actually been a really good time to kind of double down on the music stuff. 
So you tried to bake a couple banana breads, realized it wasn't for you, and just switched off? It's just when we try to do like the real bread, like an oven thing, and it's like it's such a time-consuming process just making the dough that you screw it up in the oven, and it's like a whole day to fix it. And it's like this is not worth it for like the two dollars for a loaf of bread. And so. I'm not, I'm not enjoying it enough during the process or eating it for me to spend two days doing this thing. No, exactly. Go to the grocery store and buy it. And if you want to buy the like. Fancy primo stuff, do that. You won't even know the difference. <laughs> um, did you guys write this new song during quarantine together, or was this something that you had planned for a while now? No, this was actually one that was written probably almost a year ago. Um, and it's crazy because we kind of had all the production and the majority of it done um, right when COVID hit, um, which was which was good because it's very obviously the, doing the logistics right now is difficult. Um, so, uh, it was one we've been holding on to for a little bit though. I got to tell you this, this song, cause it's super sunny. It feels so perfect for a day when you're just cruising around windows down and just having like the best time with your friends. It it's just screams everything I love about this time of year. Yeah. 100%. And we, we kind of had the debate too. Cause we're like, you know, summer 2020 is going to be uh, the most unique summer yet. It's like, we don't know what the restrictions are getting all that stuff. And, uh, we're like, should we be releasing a summer song right now? And we kind of came to the verdict that people need that kind of positive vibe right now. People need some, some sunny, happy, happy music in their life. And so we're like, this is actually the perfect song right now to cheer people up. So when you think of summers growing up as a kid, what's the one thing you love doing most? What's the one memory that always floods back? I used to love, we used to have like, we used to rent a, uh, we used to rent a cottage that was like only like 20 minutes from what worked at the sale barn. Cause you always had to go back and move cows and stuff. Um, but we used to go up there and just like go fishing and go around in our little like tin boat and just do that. But that reminds me of summer. Either that or doing hay. That is not, I know most people probably think that isn't as much fun, but doing like small square bales with all my cousins was always like the blast in the summer. Most kids are like going to the pool, going camping and riding bikes with your friends. You're like, you know what's great is hay. This is so fantastic. <laughs> well, it's so funny. Any of the, any of the kids that there's like farm kids or whatever, you know, it's like, all the cousins get together and help everybody do their hay and all that stuff. So it's like the only time you get to hang with all your cousins. So. That is so good. So what, uh, when we're listening to this song, what do you love most about it? Is it just the summer feel of it? Is there a certain lyric that you connect to most? Uh, I think it, I think it is just that summer lyric. When we wrote it, we, we thought it was a cool play on words to do summertime. Like it's a different time zone almost. And uh, so I think just that we really tried to encapsulate that chill vibe that you get in summer, how things kind of slow down and the days drag out. Um, and so I think that's probably my favorite thing. But I really love the production on it, too. We took a long time to make sure that, that we had a progressive but still sounded like JTB production, which is always really weird when you're trying to release a first song off a project. So are you good with that, though, when it comes to, you know, quote-unquote summertime, when things slow down and there's no real you have to be here and you can be late for things? Or are you more you like to be scheduled? I, I actually kind of like it. I mean, when it comes to like actually work stuff, I, I really need a schedule because if I don't have a schedule, it's like everything goes out the window. But it's, uh, I do love the idea of like just going in like a cottage or hang up by the pool and not even like thinking about it. Just you don't know if it's been an hour or 10 hours. That's uh, Those are the days you remember forever. Especially when you're doing hay with the cousins. Has it been an hour or 10? How long have we been out here? Oh, God. Yeah. How is the sun still up? <laughs> Um, I want to bring you into the show a little bit. Uh, we're, we've been talking a little bit about uh, uh, how you hurt yourself on a playground. You ever hurt yourself on, playing on the playground? Yeah, i I stuck my tongue to I stuck my tongue to a frozen pole once. <laughs> that is so Canadian. <laughs> yeah. What? Gr- how old were you? In were hard. you dared, or did you see it in a movie, or what happened? Uh, it, no, it was just it, was, it wasn't even in a movie. I think I was talking to one of my buddies. And he said, apparently you can't stick your tongue to a post and pull it away. I guess it was technically a dare because it wasn't a dare to do it. It was a bet that you can't do it and not get stuck. And so I was in grade three, I think, and I lost, obviously, the bet. So how long were you stuck there and how painful was it to rip it off? It well, So I was stuck there probably for like three minutes. It was at recess. And so then, obviously, the, I'm sure every grade three teacher is probably like, why did you do this <laughs> every time a kid does it? Um, cause they probably see it every year, but the teacher brought over like hot water and like was able to like pour hot water and warm up the post enough that it didn't like really bad. It just took like a little chunk off. But was there a while where you couldn't taste food right or things were sensitive and, and, and things like that? I feel like it still hasn't recovered. I there feel like 
Those taste buds are just that written them off since I was in grade three. What do you mean that's salty? I don't I don't taste I haven't tasted salt in 20 years. <laughs> you salt and vinegar. <laughs> There's salt in these? What are you talking about? Uh <laughs> lastly, my man, as we lead up to to Father's Day, um, what's the, the best lesson that you learned from dad? Oh, the best lesson that I learned from Or the dad, most memorable. Um, and it doesn't have to be super great, but the most memorable, like dad would always enforce this or teach this upon me or made sure I followed this rule or whatever. I've got two, one quick one and then one like real one. Okay. When I first learned how to drive a tractor, um, I think I was like probably like eight or 10. And I was like, my dad, like, you know how they are. They just like throw you on it. And they're like, just figure it out. So like, what do I do? And I think, whatever you do, just don't ride the clutch. And I was like, what, what does that even mean? Like, <laughs> that, I don't eight, know what the clutch is. Doesn't even... <laughs> yeah. So, that was that was the funniest advice because I remember not having any idea. But as a kid, you're like, okay, well, I guess I just won't ask again. So I don't look stupid. <laughs> I'll just figure it and, out when I'm in there. <laughs> his, his best advice for like running a company or management was you need to make sure everybody in a company thinks that they are the reason that it works, but not the only reason that it works. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. So that's uh, some some deep stuff. For, so you're saying you I'm not the only reason Country 105 works? Is that what you're trying to get across to me? Well, I don't, I don't want I didn't say that. I mean, there's <laughs> unique situations, of course. <laughs> I always appreciate our conversations. I can't wait to hang out with you boys again in person when we can finally do that. And uh, send my best to the boys when you talk to them, okay? Absolutely. Stay safe,